you know, I just don't get it. At what point do people just say, screw it, and go outside and do what they want? At what point does the rat go crazy in its cage staring at the cheese? Even if the government is shooting lasers directly from their offices at people, I mean, which they kind of are in a way, but that's besides the point. When do people just want to live their lives? To the average person, everything that's going on in the world seems unplanned, sudden, mystical, can't be explained. When in reality, these lunatics in control have been writing the script for thousands and thousands of years. Everything oh so carefully orchestrated to meet their end goal. Tactics such as divide and conquer, order from chaos, control of all communication sources, controlled opposition, you name it, they're using it. And what really disgusts me is the lies. Like the average person doesn't seem to believe that someone would lie to them, to deceive them, to take advantage of them. The most important thing is reading their message as a general statement as opposed to reading their BS explanation details. Natural law allows them to warn you to say one thing but then backtrack with 99 other reasons why that's not correct. And if you start paying attention to the media, you'll notice this, but they still told you that first thing. And by you going with the 99 other reasons, you play into their trap. This applies to what we're speaking about today as well. Back in 2015, Cargill had a food chain crisis simulation. Food chain reaction crisis simulation ends with global carbon tax. Climate, hunger, civil unrest, and spiking food prices came together at the food chain reaction game in Washington, D.C. this week. Cooperation mostly won the day. November 12, 2015. On Monday and Tuesday, 65 international policymakers, academics, business and thought leaders gathered at the World Wildlife Fund's headquarters in Washington, D.C. to game out how the world would respond to a future food crisis. The game took the players from the year 2020 to 2030. As it was projected, the decade brought two major food crises, with prices approaching 400% of the long-term average, a raft of climate-related extreme weather events, governments toppling in Pakistan and Ukraine, and famine and refugee crises in Bangladesh, Myanmar, Chad, and Sudan. This article is very vague. You could read it two, three, four times and still not really see what point they're trying to come across. They mention a carbon tax, a tax on meat, almost as if their made up problems already have a solution. You know, there's no burden of proof whatsoever. You know, what issue? How are you predicting years, a decade in advance when the meteorologist can't even get the weather right? These people love playing stupid, revealing limited information, making the sheeple feel smart, removing all critical thinking skills, all up until there's no food on grocery store shelves. Then the sheeple are in a state of fear and panic where they can be taken advantage of in whichever way the government so wishes. Then the psychos in charge continue to play stupid, blame it on natural disasters, unexplained phenomenon, when they very well know what's going on. We spoke about climate last week in that Biden video. I mentioned that weather is controlled by natural magnetic forces on this planet, whatever floating bullshit we're on. And now they've set up all this new Wi-Fi infrastructure. What I didn't piece together was those new Wi-Fi towers are very high powered radio frequency antennas, which is what is physically controlling the weather. It's why they need so many of them and have such powerful devices going for miles and miles and miles. The fictional scenario began in 2020 with El Nino devastating crops in India and Australia, followed by a major drought in North America the following year. Eight teams represented the US, European Union, Brazil, China, India, Africa, multilateral organizations such as the United Nations and World Bank, and global businesses. Global food inventories declined through the first half of the simulated decade, with the Mississippi River flooding and drought in Asia. Food importing nations in Africa saw demonstrations against rising food prices, while rising oil prices diverted more production to ethanol, further stressing supplies. The crisis peaked in 2024, with record food prices generating unrest in Africa, South Asia, and Ukraine. Both the US and EU teams decided to repeal mandates requiring ethanol use, while Brazil ramped up production of all crops, including sugar used for biofuels, 
China invested in dams to protect scarce water. The EU added a meat tax to discourage expensive livestock production and temporarily relaxed environmental regulations to boost its own production. The U.S. enacted a carbon tax. India taxed coal and support for a global climate deal was universal. Countries began working more closely with the United Nations to handle refugees from climate catastrophes. I got a question. Is the U.N. going to come to your farm, anal swab your cattle, and then write you a bill based off of the methane in the doo-doo sample? New normal. There's that term. An article from 2015 has the term new normal on it. Absolutely disgusting. But prices and temperatures rose again at the end of the decade, showing how abnormal is expected to be the new normal in food and agriculture. <laughs> I mean, this is just insanity. I mean, this article is six years old. And regardless of how well you prepare for this, you know, if they jack up food prices for half a decade, 10 years, no one is going to be ready for this, you know, except for the uh, elite scumbags who multiplied their wealth by 100 by rigging and manipulating the stock market and cryptocurrency. Uh, we spoke about that as well. Uh, it's, just, it's just gross, like once you can see through their lies and know exactly what's going on. It just never ends. Things are introduced as conspiracy theories, and then they happen a year later and no one bats an eye. Like, whatever. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. If you can please drop a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. I was hoping to get you know some more business infrastructure up and running before all this nonsense happened to just you know, make a lot of dried meat products and, and try to help people out with some affordable uh, stuff they could keep, but uh, who knows how, how that's going to go at this rate. Uh, so thanks again, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow.